You'd think that films like Nanook of the North and Greed in the Crowd and those of Yevgeny Bauer would be the last word in realism in cinema at this time, but no. One profoundly serious Danish filmmaker challenged romantic and fantasy cinema with such deeply felt realism that he was almost a one-man reformation, undercutting the emotionalism of mainstream cinema with a spiritual spareness. Look at this scene from The Passion of Joan of Arc. Joan, the 15th century French Catholic girl who was accused of witchcraft, has just signed a statement denying God to save her life. The actress, Mary Falconetti, had never been in a movie before, nor would she again. She's filmed only in close-up, wears almost no makeup. You can see her freckles. Her eyelashes are matted with tears. Falconetti's hair was cropped just before this scene was shot. The filming was done in silence. Such an atmosphere on the set that even some of the electricians cried. Look at the lighting and focus. No depth to the image, nothing in the background. No set or shadows. The walls were painted pink to remove their glare so as not to detract from Falconetti's face. The set designer, Herman Varm, painted the shadows on Caligari. The film was directed in France by a Dane, Carl Theodore Dreyer. He was brought up in a strict Protestant family. Falconetti and the others are speaking. Dreyer had them say the actual words that were spoken at the trial nearly 500 years earlier. He thought that this gave the scene conviction. the 90s maverick, Lars von Trier. Trier is, is, is fantastic. Why? He, he yeah, he, 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 the same thing that he did with the decoy, he also did with the script, you know. He started with a very thick script and then he kind of reduced and reduced. I don't know what he did, but, but, but it had this monumental feeling, of course, after reducing for many years, it's like a, a very good soup, you know, that has been reducing for a long time. I don't know why he's great, but, but you know, I think that goes for everybody. Why is Tarkovsky great? It's, it's really difficult to say, but it was for me to see his films were kind of a revelation. So, so it's really, you should be thankful that it's difficult to say why. People are great because it's 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 just something that you that you feel very strongly, and if you don't feel it strongly, then <laughs> they're not great. Dreyer was born out of wedlock, adopted, and brought up a Lutheran. He lived here and went to churches like this. Though he didn't believe in God, the purity and plainness of Lutheran churches seemed to have formed Dreyer's inner eye. He's the master of pared down decor. I ordet, der, der begyndte jeg på en, en temmelig indgribende forenkling. Der tolererede næsten ikke ting, som ikke havde direkte berøring med handlingen. I, der var et stort køkken, også det ville jeg gerne forenkle. Og det lykkedes mig på den måde, at jeg, der, der man jo ikke kan, kan forenkle eller stilisere virkeligheden uden at kende virkeligheden, så bad jeg den dame, der forestod i kantinen, om at møblere dette køkken, som om det var hendes eget, og således at hun selv ville føle sig tilpas i det. Og hun kom slæbende på masser af ting, der hører hjemme i et køkken, 
og tallerkener og, og krukker og alt muligt. Og det blev stillet op efter hendes ønske. Og da hun var færdig, så tog fotograf Benson og jeg fat på at udrydde alle tingene. Vi fjernede dem ikke stykke for stykke, og til sidst var der kun en 4-5 ting tilbage. Men alligevel i denne forenklede form, der øh, stod i køkkenet meget klarere som begreb end, end med alle de mange ting. Even in his first film, The President, he seems to want to simplify and purify his images in a Protestant way. Sets at the time were usually cluttered like this. Soon he started to film on misty days or into the light to soften his imagery. His shots became paler whiter. His haunting vampire movie, Vampire, features shadows against a white wall. They have a life of their own. And in its famous ending, a vampire's accomplice dies by suffocating in white flour. Dreyer's utterly spare use of whiteness was wildly rebellious. Hollywood romantic cinema was supposed to be decorative, full of detail, not blank. No other director in the story of film cared so much about whiteness, its simplicity, its spirituality. At the end of his film, Ordet, the word, a woman comes to life in a white, entirely undecorated room. In Dreyer's last film, many years later, a woman believes so completely in the power of love that he films her as if through a white scrim, as if in heaven, and she says this. Se kun på mig. Er jeg smuk? Nej, men jeg er elsket. Se kun på mig. Er jeg ung? Nej, men jeg har elsket. Se kun på mig. Lever jeg? Nej. Men jeg har elsket. <laughs> Dreyer's seriousness was deeply unfashionable, and so, in the 50s, not getting his films made, he managed this cinema. The Danish Film Institute now has a study centre dedicated to his work. It's hard not to see Dreyer's radical reduction of set and decor in Lars von Trier's completely setless film, Dogville. Hey Martha. Hello Tom. Listen, they're all coming. This was the opposite of romantic Hollywood cinema, a million miles away from the decorative splendor of the thief of Baghdad. Special permission from the regional director, Tom. I repeat, we don't need the organ. We can be spiritual without singing or reading from the Bible. It's almost seven. Don't forget your bell now. This is the original screenplay from Dreyer's film Joan of Arc. He sketched an idea for an image in the film in the margin. Dreyer had purged silent cinema of its spectacle, its decoration, its action, its bauble. What was left was a girl facing her god facing the camera. Years later, France's great maverick director, Jean-Luc Godard, had his lover and muse, Anna Karina, go to the cinema in his film Vive Sa Vie. The film she saw 
was the passion of Joan of Arc. Dreyer's Scandinavian spiritualism and fatalism was a universe away from this place, Hollywood. Escapist romantic movies were what most people saw in movie palaces like these. Places you'd go after a hard day's work to forget your troubles, to see what utopia might feel like. The realist directors of the 20s hardly got a look in in these places, but they'd seen something brilliant in the movies, the ability to capture reality and make it splendid and moving. And this was just the start. Filmmakers in Germany, France, Russia, Japan and China would see other great things in the film strip. Their discoveries would make the 1920s the greatest decade in the story of film.